Good morning Year 7, it's Mrs Reed here and today we're going to be completing a video lesson because I can't be there in person but I will be back in the classroom with you on Thursday this week. Today we're going to be starting a new topic so this is what we're going to use as our title today. Can you make sure you have your pink exercise book in front of you? And on a new page we're going to write down rhetoric and persuasion. Can you write that down as your title now, please? Write down today's date and underline both with a ruler. Pause the video and do that now. OK, so now we're ready to start. We're going to start with some, what we call a mastery review. That means we're going to be looking at some things that we learned about last term, recapping them to start with before we learn our new knowledge. So you have five questions to have a go at. We have a maximum of five minutes to answer your questions. Can you write down the numbers one to five in the margin? And then next to each number, write your answer. It's OK to use a short answer for this task. So it does not have to be in a full sentence. And if you're not sure of one, that's OK. My advice to you is to write the question so that when we go through the answers together, you can write down the correct um, answer in your book. So pause the video and have a go at answering as many as you can, please, in five minutes. OK, so now we're ready to go through and mark our answers. What I would suggest is if you do have a different coloured pen, that can be a really useful way of checking and correcting as we go. So the first question was what was meant by the term hubris? And we looked at this when we've been studying Greek mythology. So hubris refers to excessive pride or self overconfidence. OK, well done. Give yourself a tick if you got that one right. A didactic story. A didactic story is one that is intended to teach us something, perhaps teach us a moral lesson. Give yourself a tick if you got that one right. What was Achilles' heroic flaw? OK, if you can remember the character of Achilles, our tragic hero. His flaw was his hubris. If you remember in the story, his hubris led to his downfall and his death. He thought that he was immortal, however he had a weakness. That led him to make a mistake in battle and then to be killed. Who wrote the Iliad? Okay, well done if you remembered that it was Homer. OK, the ancient poet Homer. And what does the word malignant mean? So malignant means evil or perhaps intending to do harm to others. Give yourself a tick if you've got that one right. Now we're going to recap uh, a common spag issue. So this is about the ending of plural words. So if a word ends in Y and the letter before it is a consonant, we don't just add S to the word, but we change the ending from Y to IES. Look at the example here. We have the word body. If we want to say there was more than one body, we can't just add an S. That would be wrong. Because the letter before it, D, is a consonant, we change the Y to IES. That's correct. So we're going to say the rule together. Listen first. If a word ends consonant Y, change the Y to IES. Okay, let's say that together. 
on the count of three. One, two, three. If a word ends consonant Y, change the Y to IES. Great. Now I'm going to ask you to say all together, but on your own. So after three, please. One, two, three. Okay, well done. Let's put this into practice now. We need to apply the rule. I would like you to correct the incorrect spellings here. So let's start with the first one, monkeys. Okay, well, does this end with a consonant and then a Y? No, this letter is a vowel. This one's correct and we don't need to change it. Now let's go to puppies. Is the letter before Y a vowel or a consonant? It's a consonant. So this one's wrong and needs to change. Write the correct spelling for puppies. Now go through the rest of the words and fix up the ones that need to change. Pause the video here and we'll mark our answers in a few minutes. Right, let's get ready to mark. If you have a different coloured pen, that would be useful to you. So we can see here we need to change the word puppies to end with an IES. We need to change families also to end in an IES. The word boys can stay the same because the letter before Y is a vowel. Spies must change. Babies, that must change too. Berries, we need to change that one. Replies, this must also change. And finally, alloys. The letter before Y is a vowel, so that one's correct. Go through and check your answers and you can give yourself a mark out of nine. Well done, everyone. So on to our new topic. We're learning all about rhetoric and persuasion over the next few weeks. So we need to start with our question and find out what is rhetoric and where did it begin? What are the origins of rhetoric? The first thing we need to remember and recap is the concept, the idea, of democracy. So to understand the idea of power and the purpose of rhetoric, we first need to explore what democracy is. Rhetoric is a characteristic of a democratic society. So I want you to discuss first, do you have any existing knowledge of what democracy means? Pause the video here and turn and talk to a partner. Okay, now let's move on and we need to listen first before we'll make some notes together. So the word democracy is a noun. It means a system of government by the whole population or all of the eligible members of a state, typically through elected representatives. This means that the whole population or those people who are eligible to vote will be allowed to elect who they want to represent them in government. The word democracy comes from ancient Greek. We can break it into two parts. Demos, meaning power, and kratia, meaning, sorry, demos, meaning people, and kratia, meaning power. So a short way of writing this would be that democracy equals people power. Okay, pause the video and make a note on the definition of the word democracy.
Excellent. So the word democracy first appeared in ancient Greek and it appeared in their political and their philosophical thought in the city-state of Athens. The word itself comes from people and power, people and strength. And the Athe Ath Athenians established what is generally thought to be the first democracy in 508, 507 BC, around that year. So what does democracy look like in our society? Well, having a democratic government means that people get to vote. If you vote, you can choose your leader and the government you would like to elect, uh, sorry, you would like to represent you in parliament. Sometimes people can propose new laws or changes to existing laws, for example, through voting in a referendum. And people also help to make other important decisions in society. Think about something like jewellery service. This is a process where people are selected at random and go to court to help decide whether someone is guilty of a crime or not. All of these things give power to the people and make sure that their voices are heard in society. Okay, so I'd like you to do a bit of thinking about what democracy means. Which words here best describe a democracy? Now you can discuss with one another. You might wish to work with a partner. Write down four to five words which you think best represent ideas of democracy. Okay, when you're ready, I'm going to go through which ones I will have chosen and you can compare them to your own. So I think the word equal would be a good way to describe democracy. It's a way to ensure that everybody is treated equally so that when you reach the age of 18, everyone is entitled to vote in an election. I also think that the word majority would be a good choice. Remember, this means that we're listening to the majority of the people in a country before decisions are made. I think democracy is about fairness. It's fair because we are able to have a say on the important issues that affect and impact our lives. I've also circled the word government. A government is a group of people who are chosen to represent us um, and lead our country. This is different to the word below, dictatorship. In a dictatorship, we have one person, a dictator, who holds all the power and makes the decisions um, for everybody else in the country. I might also have circled the words freedom and power. Democracy also allows people to have freedom and freedom of choice and to hold power within their country. Okay, now we're on to learning a new word. This time it's the word rhetoric. This is the art of persuasive speaking, the ability to persuade or influence others through our language. We need to practice saying it first. I'll break it down. Ret or Rick. We're going to say that together in three parts. Ret or Rick. One more time. Ret or Rick. Excellent. Now we're going to say it as one word. Rhetoric. Let's say that together. Rhetoric. Now you say after three. One, two, three. Yes, rhetoric. 